What's up everybody, SK Lifestyle. I'm SK, of course, and I thought while I'm out here just kind of, you know, clearing the driveway, I'd give you a shot of this electric uh, snow blower that we picked up. Yeah, that's right. This is the ooh, Greenworks. Yeah, 120 volt. <laughs> well, you already seen the thumbnail. You already know. You clicked on a video to watch it, so that's why we're here. So anyway, I'm just going to give a few shots of me actually using this thing, and then I'll wrap up right at the end with some thoughts of mine, what I think works well, what doesn't, that sort of thing. And I have owned gas power blowers, so I do have some experience with that kind of thing. So be sure you hit that subscribe button, leave your comments down below, let's get to it. Alright, so you've seen me clear that little patch right there, two swipes, pretty quick. Now we are going to, ooh, I got some good pile up over there on the, on the drive pat or the walkway, so let's do that. Quick little 360 around here. Not gonna go in depth on everything. Just wanna give you a good look at what this really looks like from different angles. <clears throat> now this chute, you can obviously just click it, go forward and back, pretty easy. This handle for it is very basic. It feels like it's gonna break, but it's just good resistance. And it's pretty, left or right you can kind of get it halfway that's about it not big deal you can see we got the lights in there not doing much now because it's daylight but that's pretty cool and that's pretty much it now the operation is simple you press this button and then you pull this back see that? you do it the other way nothing and of course you need your little on off button there turned on and that's pretty much it. It does fold up, uh, you know, pretty much just like a cedar or something. So it doesn't take up much room in the driveway. Yeah, let me know what you all think. 20 inch box. Uh, you know, the one big thing it's lacking is obviously uh, it's not powered. So you got to kind of move it around yourself. And obviously with that not being gas powered, you're low on what it can throw, but it hasn't done too bad. So. Let's go do the big test right now, and then I'll wrap up with my thoughts. I'm gonna go check out the apron uh, down there right at the bottom of the, the um, driveway where the snow plows have been bunching up all the snow. And let's uh, do it for the YouTube and see how much of a hard time I actually have with it. So let's go do it. Hey, and don't forget, be sure you subscribe to SK Lifestyle. Yeah, that's right. You just wanna hit that subscribe button right there and that notification bell. All right, so I haven't tested it out at all. This is the first time right here, right now. So let's see how it does on the apron. I don't 
think we need to wait for the end of the video wrap up to uh, say that that didn't work that well, but it did make something happen, right? All right, let me get the shovel, clear this all up, and I'll get back inside and we can go over exactly what I think about this machine, some of the issues, some of the good things, and uh, yeah, again, leave those comments down below. SK Lifestyle. All right, so Snowmageddon is over. Probably gonna get some more snow tomorrow, but you know, it is what it is. That's how it is here in Connecticut. So here's my wrap up comments. And if you disagree with me, if you agree with me, just leave those comments down below. Let's have a little dialogue. It always helps other people watching the video as well. So, and while you're down there, hit that like button, that subscribe button as well. So I have a few comments. It's been a few hours, so I've definitely had some time to kind of get my thoughts together and so forth. So the cord. That's the big thing, obviously, with electric snowblower over a gasoline one. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to uh, figure that one out. It, has, it is obviously still a sticking point. You can see me kind of messing with it right here. So, you know, it's just one of those things you got to kind of deal with. Now, I have a pretty long driveway and it's actually a wide one. So I need a pretty good size cord. <clears throat> I was using a hundred foot cord and there was an <clears throat> instance, pardon me, there was an instance or two where, you know, you kind of got to, you know, fling it this way or whatever. Uh, the other thing is you can obviously end up stepping on it. <clears throat> now, I do want to say the connection piece, it doesn't just wiggle out. You know, maybe over time or something it could loosen, but I didn't need any kind of electrical tape or something to hold it on there. It sat. My only real issue was when, you know, I wasn't paying attention and I wasn't holding it. Because what I kind of did was just grab the orange cord a little bit and just hold it against the, uh, the handle piece while I'm going. So that way it was up away from my feet. Because that was the problem. If you forget, you kind of step on the orange cord, you move, it unplugs. So that's definitely something of contention uh, issue. But I think if you're getting into electric snow blowers, you already understand the cord. But hey, there is rechargeable snow blowers as well. So that is an option. Um, the chute, uh, you know, it's cheap. It's cheap plastic. It's very easy to manipulate though. It's just up and down. The, uh, <clears throat> the little reel thing that you use uh, to change it left and right is very sticky. It kind of feels like as if it's almost gonna break. Like it's at the point where there's too much tension, but you just push past it. And that's just kind of, I think, built in so that it holds. It doesn't kind of get loose and just start going whatever way it wants to. Um, so, you know, and it was pretty easy. It was either left or right. You can kind of get it at 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Um, I'm sure if you want it real specific, you can kind of hold it and make it do it. But it's pretty, you know, it's pretty generic. It's just kind of left or right thing. And one other thing I do want to mention is the actual little knob piece that you use to, to wind up uh, the chute left or right. If that comes off, it's just a little screw ending to the metal, uh, what do you call it? To the metal bar there. So guys and gals, but certainly guys, you may want to be careful because you know, you're pushing it. So if you hit resistance, you're going to keep going while it stops. And yeah, that little bar piece can almost jab you where you don't want to be jabbed. Trust me. Um, and I have a little bit of a downhill section. So when it stopped, I'm kind of going right downhill into it. And yeah, it just wasn't really that comfortable. So, you know, just something to be mindful of uh, on this one. I'm pretty sure for other ones as well. But yeah, I, I didn't really consider that at all until it happened a few times. The light um, <clears throat> or it's light, I should say, you know, even going uphill, that was a concern for me. I really wanted a new snowblower that had, you know, uh, power, power wheels so that I didn't have to do the walking, uh, you know, moving it around. But this thing is so light that it really... It's comparable to like the resistance uh, feel of like, uh, if you were shoveling, if you had like two, yeah, like just heavy snow, I guess, really. Overall, you know, I would prefer to have something that is powered on its own, uh, just so, you know, as it gets slippery and stuff, whatever, you don't really have to worry about it. But <clears throat> that's one of the things that you gotta kinda have to deal with and put up with. Uh, I was just thankful to report that it's really not that difficult to go up up a hill and I have a pretty good grade. It's like that. So, you know, it's not, not that's not that bad. Um, I do like the fact that you can just stop and start with ease. I mean, not that you couldn't with a gas powered, uh, you know, motor, but you know, you don't got to turn on and off the gas. You don't got to pull it or whatever. Some of them have the electric start. 
uh, you know, so that's pretty much just about as easy, but you know, just really stop and start. And that was the other thing, especially with prices going up here in Connecticut, electric rates doubled. So get your electric supplier, get a cheaper rate. Uh, that's my little SK pro tip for you today. Uh, but so yeah, if you're not going to be using it, I'm walking away for two minutes. I'd probably rather not have a 120 volt machine just running for no reason. So you can easily just let go of it like a lawnmower turns right off. You come right back to it, hold the button and pull. It's just instant, you know, start right back up. So that was just a nice, nice thing to, to, to deal with. Um, it can leave sheets of snow on the, on the ground. So it's not as heavy as a gas powered machine. And it doesn't have one of those very serious, like metal lips to it to kind of cut into the ice and stuff right at the bottom. So you can kind of push it forward and try to get it to dig in a little more. And it does. But I think generally, you're probably going to get like a little uh, like two or three millimeter um, sheet of snow still on the ground. But I mean, for how much it threw, it, you know, it's not really that bad. It, get, it got rid of a lot of snow. So that little sheet at the bottom isn't too bad. And some places it did all right. I think with fluffy snow, it's going to do a lot better. But as the day went on and it got, you know, the snow got a little wetter, um, you know, that's that's kind of what happened. Now, uh, you, we saw the pictures or the video, the apron is just a no-go. Um, you know, that six inches of just heavy slush and uh, uh, muck down at the bottom that's being pushed by the snow, uh, by the snow plows, not gonna happen. You, you're just not gonna really be able to do it. So you're gonna need your two hands and a shovel for that one. Um, but you know, really, uh, anything under like six inches and fluffy snow, it's gonna be fine. Uh, like just under six inches of like, you know, maybe four to five inches of like uh, medium wet snow, it can kind of do. Um, but if you're talking about heavy slush, ha like that thick stuff that's super thick, then it's not gonna happen. Um, so another tip, probably try not to wait too, too late in the day when it warms up and then everything gets really wet. Um, but you saw me, I, I waited till the middle of the day. It was definitely a lot thicker. It was good that, it was that good snowball snow, if that helps you out. <laughs> Um, and it, yeah, it, it went through it. All right. So that I was pleased with for sure. Um, it has good performance. I didn't have any, it didn't have any signs of breaking down, even going through the apron. I mean, it, it couldn't do it anymore, but it just stopped. And as soon as you pull back, it just keeps working. Um, I mean, it's just regular cheap plastic, but it felt pretty good for a cheap kind of machine, if that makes sense. So, I mean, I bought mine used, so that makes me feel a little bit better about it, of course. Um, but yeah, I think overall, um, you know, it's a pretty, I don't know. It, it, it gives a thumbs up for me. I mean, I can't talk about long-term use of years and years, um, but it seems like a decent product. And I just wanted to mention that one of my tips would be if you can, just like I said, buy one used. Um, I, I just think there's not really much that can wear down on it. You know what I mean? So unless it's like 20 years old, I would just save the money. Don't go spend two, 300 bucks on a new one. Um, you're kind of getting into the territory. You can get a pretty decent used gas machine. Um, so, you know, I got this one for like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So uh, that was a pretty good deal. And yeah, I think, I think that's, can't, can't really go wrong with it. And from seeing what it did, you know, it's just, it's, it's going to get its, we're going to get its money's worth, I should say. And because it's electric, there's no maintenance, can just park it up in the shed when we're done for the year and just pull it right back out. And that I really like as well. I am really, really happy about that. And I think that pretty much touches on all the uh, all the things I had there. Oh, the LED lights. I'll show you a quick video of that right now in the garage so it's just completely black. All right, so a little reference for you. This is how bright it is with the uh, lights on in the garage. I'm going to turn it off and just have the lights on for the snowblower. So let's check it out. All right. Three, two, one. So not too bad. I mean, that's definitely bright enough that if it's pitch black out, you can see right in front of the machine. So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty good. So that's really the best kind of light that you're going to get from it. Obviously, if there's, you know, the house lights on and all that stuff, um, it's not going to really help for the test of this video. Um, I think they're, they're all right. Again, it's just good that they're on there. Um, you know, I'm usually out there with like a little headlamp, the size of one of them. So at least you got two right there. 
I mean, you can't complain. The thing could have easily not had them. So I'm not going to really, you know, try to rate it and all that stuff. It's a cheap electric machine. It has two little lights on it. Hey, thumbs up when you're, you know, around the little walkway in the front, uh, front of your house or something. Maybe it'll help out. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. Did, did the lights suck for you? Have it, Has it never helped you at any point? Or, you know, has it been your saving grace? I'm interested to see about that. So hopefully you appreciate this video. If you did, again, give it a like button or give it a like. Hit that like button. <laughs> give it a like. Yeah. This one's running long. SK needs his coffee. So I'm going to go do that. Hit that subscribe button as well. I appreciate all your support. And yeah, if you're subscribing, I'm sure I'll catch you all next time. SK Lifestyle.